They are students of 9A and 9B. You see, the Mughal Empire was one of, one of the most important dynasties of India who ruled for many years. Today I am going to discuss about the economic system of the Mughal period. I am going to discuss about art and architecture of the Mughals, sculpture of the Mughals, calligraphy of the Mughals. Now the economic system of the Mughals. Before uh, explaining the following points, I, I would like to answer one question of my one of one of my students who wanted to learn who wish to learn the answer already i explained already i have explained the answer in my in my previous class but yet for his conveniences once again i am uh, answering the question what is the uh, question his question is what is mansabdari system what do you mean by the mansabdari system Mansabdari system was the organizational basis of civil and military administration during the Mughal period. And uh, the Mansabdari, Mansabdars were eligible to maintain an army of their own ranging from 10 to 10,000 soldiers, both cavalry and infantry. And this post, the post however, was not hereditary. This system was introduced by Emperor Akbar. This system is known as Mansabdari system, my dear student. Now, I am going to discuss about the point as for the following economic system of the country. During the Mughal period, economic system. What was about the economic system during the Mughal period? You know, the Mughals introduced many good policies for the improvement of the people of our country, India. The Mughals realized that India was a country, they had established their rule in order to rule forever. They accepted the influence of the Hindus in India. As a, as a, as a Hindu majority country, India as a Hindu majority country, the Mughals realized that the economic system of that country should be strengthened. Otherwise, the entire parts of this country would, uh, would be dissatisfied with the wrong policies of the Mughals. It is, we are fortunate enough to have such a great ruler, Akbar, the Mughal dynasty, uh, embraced the Mughal dynasty, the rules of Akbar, the policies of Akbar embraced the Mughals. And as a result of it, everywhere law and order was strictly law and order was uh, was strictly maintained law and order was not disrupted during the period of akbar that's why he is known as akbar the great the economic state, economic uh, position of the country you know peasants and farmers were happy rich and prosperous agricultural lands were measured you know impartially no partiality was followed under the terms of uh, the, you know, uh, Land Revenue Act of Todor Mool. Lands were measured as per the character of the, as per the, you know, fertility. So, uh, there was a variation in various lands. Some lands were barren lands, some, were, some lands were fertile, some, uh, some lands were infertile. So, the, the, the taxes varied from peasant to peasant, farmer to farmer. And by this way, the Mughals obtained respect from the peasants and farmers from the people of our country. 
and a good system of uh, economic policy uh, and, and attracted millions of Indian people towards their realm. The Mughals, you know, during the time when the Mughals ruled our country and Akbar was the ruler, he gave equal equal opportunity to all communities. He appointed many people in his administration from different communities of India. But Akbar gave chance, gave many chances to the Rajputs. Why? Because the Rajputs contributed their lives for the cause, for the noble cause of Akbar's fame and glory. And as a, as a result of it, during the reign of Akbar, the Rajputs, the Rajput extended, the Rajput soldiers give their best efforts in extending the Mughal Empire in various parts of India. So only by this way, the economic system, whatever the Mughals introduced, the, it was uh, in, uh, introduced, Akbar was, was a ruler who adopted good policies for the, uh, for the people of our country, India, and it was followed by, it was carried on by the, by the successors of Akbar one by one, except Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. Now, art and architecture, you know, in the field of art and architecture, the Mughals uh, left vivid impression. In the field of art and architecture, the Mughal left vivid impression. The Mughal art, the Mughal painting, the Mughal calligraphy, uh, the everywhere, the Mughal uh, left their impression and introduced uh, Mughal style, Mughal painting, Mughal art uh, while constructing a number of temples, a number of uh, mosques, number of monuments, minarets and buildings and forts. Everywhere there was a symbol of the Mughals, Mughal art, Mughal architecture, Mughal painting. Uh, the Jali system is attracts, it attracts the architectural value of the Mughals. And the Pietra design also uh, in, uh, also increases its acceptability. The visitors, uh, you know, uh, uh, visits uh, the uh, historical places, the places of historical interests, which was construct, which were constructed by the Mughals. So the Mughal emperor, you know, uh, left no stone unturned to. Uh, uh, to increase the glory and image of the Mughals while constructing the number of buildings, while constructing, you know, the, uh, you know, buildings, while constructing, you know, monuments, while constructing uh, uh, mosques and while constructing mausoleum, everywhere they left their impression and they left their image as uh, the people so that the people of India must remember the Mughals forever, that once upon a time the rulers, the Mughals, uh, the Mughals ruled this country, India, and established a number of <coughs> mausoleums, number of forts, number of mosques, and uh, uh, buildings, forts of Mughal art and architecture. So, you know, Everywhere, another thing is that that should be uh, in, that should be included with uh, this point. That is, the Mughals, you know, uh, impose many uh, prohibition on paintings following the Holy Quran. Yet the Mughal emperors always cherished a love for paintings. That art was first introduced in Persia by the, Mong by the Mongol conqueror sometimes in the 13th century but following the same system Babur introduced the Mongol art of painting because they belong to the same family Mongol and uh, afterwards the, uh, the Mughal emperor Humayun 
who was a great lover of music and poetry and painting in course of his exile in persia he came in contact with the leading painters leading painters of that land and persuaded two of them and when he recaptured the mughal empire and established uh, established the mughal dynasty he uh, himself learned already in the meantime while staying there at persia he uh, learned um, the miniature painting he learned painting from these two old teachers who are they i can't uh, recall their names of the old teachers but uh, he learned from them while staying uh, in persia akbar also inherited the taste for painting from father his father uh, humayun and took lesson in this art so besides the chinese art the chinese or mongolian school of painting also encourage the paintings of the mughals mughal style mughal art mughal painting gradually attracts millions of the people of uh, the world and that's why while uh, at uh, while constructing buildings while constructing mausoleums sazahan followed the same system sazahan and sazahan also adapted sazahan also adapted the same technique of method same painting same art same architecture and during this period foreign foreign uh, travelers uh, they visit and they were they were uh, they were uh, attracted by the uh, mughal art of painting and architecture they were astonished due to the you know due to the painting of art due to the painting of you know architecture uh, introduced by the mughals and uh, apart from this the mughals also uh, introduce pietra design which also attracted uh, millions of the people of the world the zali system and some a uh, system they introduce from indian painters indian architects that's why indo mughal paint indo mughal painting indo mughal art and indo mughal architecture also was followed in various uh, you know construction in various monuments and various buildings in various you know uh, palaces and this helped this art flourish the mughals to create a separate uh, uh, department of painting and placed uh, one person named khaza abdu samad khaza abdu samad as its chief he opened himself supervised the department and encouraged them the artists were enrolled the artists were enrolled as royal royal servants and granted mansabs due to uh, his patronage the national india school of painting was was created whose members were drawn from all parts of india and even from outside so during jahangir's reign the mughal school of miniature painting reached its climax in fact akbar laid the foundation of miniature painting but it was his son jahangir born of a rajput princess who by his knowledge and artistic uh, style guided the new school of indian art Uh, of painting so sazahan also followed the system sazahan but sawa sazahan never had the same passion for painting why because sazahan had different style of painting and art and uh, he uh, sazahan also uh, sazahan reduced the number of court painters and the quality of their production also suffered why because the prominent members of his court painters where uh, you know uh, where from iran where from uh, where from iran and persia and the painters of sazahan's time had a special characteristic it contained lavish display of gold and rich pigments rather than by the blend of color and his eldest son darasuzu darasuko was a great patron of art and uh, his tragic death was no doubt a big uh, uh, incident a very tragic incident but the mughal painting and art whatever he learned 
and he uh, used to make it is it attracted sajan a lot sajan also followed the same style same painting style of his uh, eldest son dada suko and asked and uh, instructed uh, the painters the architects to follow the uh, same technique and art of his eldest son dada suko the calligraphy another point the calligraphy calligraphy a close associate of this art of painting it found in india persia and china but the mughal style of art and mughal style of calligraphy most of the mughal emperors liked and loved this calligraphy which calligraphy the piece of art which was introduced by akbar himself and later on followed by the successors of akbar calligraphic writing was collected and preserved in albums like pictorial art form from abul fazl we came to know that eight modes of calligraphy was uh, were there in book and then uh, you know the most famous calligrapher the most famous calligrapher at akbar's court was mohammad husain kashmiri who received the title zaini kalam both jahangir and sajahan Uh, were fond of calligraphy so though the art of calligraphy which was introduced by the mughals encouraged they encouraged them a lot and ultimately the people belonging to the same tradition same caste same uh, uh, same style they enriched it they enriched the system of calligraphy the number of people who worked who employed for binding the books and eliminating the margins of the most important books was babarnama and tariki khanari so these are the important book and uh, these books also uh, were made were written and also mention about the system of calligraphy introduced by the mughals and sculpture as i told you earlier encouraged by babar sculpture however was not encouraged by babar and humayun who were orthodox muslims and strictly followed the quranic precept both of them who were they they were babar and his son humayun and later on they abolished the images of living be uh, uh, abolished the image of sculpture they they, they did not want to uh, uh, give importance to the uh, to this uh, art of art this art sculpture as akbar was not an orthodox muslim so Ag- akbar encouraged the art of sculpture and from that time from akbar's time from akbar's time time onwards the uh, the art of sculpture was followed was adopted by the successors of akbar so up to this my dear students next day the remaining part thank you